In this video we're going to take a look at applying some of our energy equations. So in our first problem it says we have a 60 kilogram student is elevated 12 meters above the reference level. Determine all unknowns. Alright, so 60 kilograms is the mass of our student. So I can put that here, 60 kilograms. 12 meters is the height above the reference level. Alright, and G stands for our gravitational acceleration. So G is 10 meters per second squared. All right, then we're going to use the equation that GPE equals M times G times H. So plugging that in, I will do 60 times 10 times 12, and that gives me a total of 7,200. And our units right there are going to be joules. If you're curious how the units work out, so when I multiply kilograms times meters per second squared, so these combine to make a newton, and then when I multiply newtons times meters, that makes a joule. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our next problem. So here we have a 65 kilogram bicyclist has a kinetic energy of 1400 joules. And we're going to be using the equation that kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. All right, so 65 kilograms is our mass. 1400 joules is our kinetic energy. And we're asked to solve for the velocity. All right, so to solve this, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two, giving me two times the kinetic energy equals mv squared. Divide both sides by mass gives me 2ke over m equals v squared. And lastly, taking the square root of both sides, I get square root of 2ke over m is equal to velocity. All right, so if I plug that in, I'm going to be plugging in the square root of two times my kinetic energy of 1400 and divide that by m, all of that should be under the radical and that gives me a velocity of 6.56 meters per second. Lastly, I wanna take a look at calculating work and loss. So I'm going to be using the equation that work equals force times distance. If I want to be a little bit more specific and say the forces that are doing the work times the distance and then for loss it's the forces that are causing the loss times distance. Alright so our problem says a 65 a 60 kilogram bicyclist pedals 90 meters. During this time she generates an 80 newton forward friction but also experiences a 5 newton backwards friction and a 50 newton drag. Determine all unknowns. All right, so first, that 60 kilograms, that's going to be the mass of the bicyclist. That actually doesn't show up in our problem, so it's actually extra information. 90 meters is the distance that she traveled. I see three different forces here. So 80 newton forward friction, 5 newton backwards friction, and 50 newton drag. The forward friction, that's going to go into energy that she adds, so that's going to be associated with the work. That's the force that is doing work. So 80 newtons right there. That was our forward friction. To get my loss, I look at any forces that are acting against her, and so that's the backwards friction and the drag. Just like if we were drawing a free body diagram, we're going to add those two together, and we get 55 newtons for the forces that are causing loss. All right, then I can just multiply. And to get the work, I'm gonna do the force that was doing the work. So the forward friction, which was 80 times 90. And that gives me 7,200 Newton times meters become joules. And work is again, uh, is gaining energy from an outside source. So it should have the same units as energy. Loss is going to be 55 times 90, which gives me 4,950 joules.